ite iwi no mai hari mai ki tenei papahotanga a fakata Māori. Kamihi ki na mawanga na waimi na ahika o tenei ro. Tena koto ka toa. Ki na kai wakahari mi na kai whakataitai hi mihi mahana hoki ki akoto. Welcome to Wellington for the final of the New Zealand Secondary School Senior Boys Competition. Two wonderful teams of gladiators about to go toe-to-toe -to -toe for 24 minutes. The defending champions, Sacred Heart College, will take on the current North Island champions, Tauranga boys. Tauranga have never won it. They've come so close in recent years. Sacred Heart, well, one of the great schools when you go through the history of this competition. A lot of people are saying this will be a close one. This will be on a knife's edge. We hope you do enjoy it. Joining me in commentary, bringing you all the expert comments and analysis, is Hamish McDonald. Hamish, do we throw the form guide out? Is this about who turns up on the day? Is this just going to come down to key moments? He could have marked great to be here um, for the national final. Look, I think it is. I think, you know, both teams have had good tournaments. Um, you know, they both had solid wins in their semi final yesterday. It is going to be about weathering that storm early. They're both going to come out firing. Um, I've just seen them warming up. There is, there is a look in both those teams' sets of eyes. They are ready. They are ready for this. They are up for this. I think it's going to be an absolute battle. As we said, we'll have the introductions for you in one moment. Four quarters of six minutes. Already today, we've had the bronze medal match, and that was. Rangatoto College, who ended up losing to Hamilton Boys High School. Hamilton Boys High School, an outstanding team, second at the North Island Championships, but just couldn't quite get the job done against Sacred Heart yesterday. So we'll have our formal team introductions, and then we'll get underway. Hope you are enjoying coverage here across Whakata Māori. Sacred Heart College up against the current mobile energy of the looking to create a little bit of history, looking to try and win this for the first time. Let's introduce our team, starting with Sacred Heart. Very number one, Clay Van Heerman. Number two, Patrick McCall. Number three, Tom McClay. Number four, Jesse Eckman. Number five, Jensen Cookley. Thank <laughs> you. 
Folks, there is the team introductions. Sacred Heart, Tauranga Boys, it is a rematch of the 2023 New Zealand Secondary Schools final. Sacred Heart, the winner on that day. But Tauranga Boys, they came through, won the North Island title earlier in the year in Auckland. And here we are, once again, these two schools face for a chance at the national championship. Yeah, it should be an exciting one. Well, uh, been busy three or four days for these teams. Recovery will be a big part, not just individually, but collectively. Cohesion. They would have played each other or seen each other enough now for the coaches to have a little bit of data on each of them, knowing what style they want to play. Interesting pre-game protocols. So Tauranga there, deciding to... Fit. And the Sacred Heart deciding to... Go through a slightly different warm-up as we have a look at the Tauranga Boys College. They're in the circle, the circle of trust, the tree of trust. So, just running through that, Gene Baggett, another shawler in there. We go back to the days of Charlie Shivnan. Some very, very experienced players in this Tauranga boys team who've been here at this level previously have learnt how to lose in the hope of trying to learn how to win today. Been talking to talking to people around town this week about this Tauranga boys team, the name that keeps coming up, Gene Baggett. Um, he's had a really big, really big tournament by all accounts. Um, when you look down the other end, um, Rowan Elliott's a really good player. Um, heard really good things about Jed Evans. Got a lot of depth in the Sacred Heart team. I think that's one of the strengths of the program. One to 13. They're, one, they're really, really strong across the board. And they would have been disappointed with their North Island Championship, and they know they're better. And they've got such depth in their program. Are we going to see history? Are we going to see just the second team outside of Auckland win this New Zealand Second the Skulls Water Polo Championship? First team to do it was Hamilton Boys High School about three years ago. Sacred Heart took the rich history and tradition. We've got a wonderful facility at that school. Big shout out to the alumni of both schools sitting back and watching this one. It's good to see Wellington College, a former champion of this event. They were back in the uh, back in the mix this year. Um, not the strongest showing, but it was great to have them back involved in the tournament. So Tauranga. Underway immediately, and they'll go through Cody Henry, big number eight. Immediately looking to try and fight Logan Gilbanks. So Gilbanks looking to try and push forward. Now they need to try and get up as he go himself. No, lays off. Goes out to Baggett. The key maker here, Baggett. Good defence being shown here by Sacred Heart at the moment. Cody Henry. Four total under not panicking. 
And so, shot clock runs out. So, a good start defensively. Being shown by Sacred Heart. And then they'll get possession. And they'll bring it up through Josh Anderson. Anderson across to Rowan Elliott. Just have a look at this high press from both teams. Across Jeff Evans in the number four cap. Beyond the shot clock pressure as well. So both teams haven't managed to get a shot off. We talk about finals being won on defence. And when you want this could be a low scoring final. If this is any indication. Now they can look to try and go quickly here. Tauranga. First opportunity. Oh, great piece of individual brilliance there from Austin Roper. Wow. Just his ability to switch it up. And he just deceived the goalkeeper, didn't he? Here, look at this. Looked like he was going to go high, and then bang, just straight underneath the arms. Probably kind of, you know, Blaze comes up really high there for Sacred Heart. Does a good job, but he leaves that angle open. Really nicely picked out by Austin Rucker. I think that's just a little bit of those really nerves and miscom there for Sacred Heart. It's uncharacteristic to leave someone that, that free on two metres. Um, I think it's just those early final nerves settling in. So, momentary pause. We looks like the shot clock at the far end of the pool. You can see the referee on the top left of the screen and left the scoreboard. It was just a little bit shaky. Uh, so they're just going to get that fixed before we yeah. proceed. Yeah, John, John Waldo there over on the right side in the white shirt. Just Water Pilot doing everything they can to make sure they get sorted out. So a little bit of technical issue. I'm not sure this will affect either team. Both referees today, Gisela Dijon and Michael Brooks, uh, both Water Products ranked the legal referees. Michael from New Zealand, uh, Gisela for the country of France. He has a for three years down here with London working, um, unrelated to Water Pilot. But he um, has been you know, kind enough to give up his time while he's been down here um, to referee. Yeah, I oh know, always good too. Um, I'll ask you this, and I mean it with the, uh, the greatest respect. Is, is there a, a slightly different interpretation between, say, the European referees in the Southern Hemisphere, like you tend to get in rugby, or is, or is there not? Is, is water polo just not open to as much interpretation? No, I think there is, um, and I think that there, you know, different referees referee the game differently, and it's in the water polo world book is difficult because it leaves so much room for interpretation. Yeah. Um, there's always exclusion fouls happening. There's always things happening, and it's about what you whistle. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the key strengths that teams need to have is their ability to get. You yeah. know, um, get a read on those referees early. There is John Wall, though. Being at the Olympic Games level. Official here in New Zealand water polo. Uh, Sacred Heart will get played back underway, and it'll start out through Will Quinn. Big man Quint, and now looking to drive forward is Josh Anderson. So they want to go match everything Toad on the do. And there's a question mark over any team, of the two teams, possibly still over Sacred Heart, who haven't really quite maybe fulfilled their true potential this year. But then they'll tell you too, it's all about, well, oh, you guys can win the battle, we want to win the war, and they're in this final. And so they come through Toby Grace, but again, really good defence, big shot. The most desperate shot is this press defense from Todon just shuts down any attacking options. Here goes the way here of Sacred Heart. Now the big shot comes. Great save. Well done from Jax Martin for Todonga. Did a good job in that goal, hogging that near post, making sure he's up there. Forcing, forcing a difficult shot for Sacred Heart. Seth Byers, the number six across there on the right. Then big, another big cannon of a shot. They come off the goalkeeper, no, so that will be put on. He'll get played back underway through their goalkeeper, Jack Martin. And then they look to try and go long, look to try and hit them early. The intended receiver, Henry Scholes. Sacred Heart setting them back into a little bit of a zone defence here. Yeah, looking to just not press as high. Allowing the ball carrier just a little bit more time. There's pros and cons with either defence. Press exclusion in the match. Josh Anderson sent to the... And the big cannon shot does come, does it? Oh, got to admit to it. Really good save there from Blaze van der Heerden. 
He wants to get it up and tip it up onto the crossbar. And now it's moving the other way. Cody Henry, the tower of boys excluded, so take it hard to get their first chance for the next player. Really good, big, strong effort, but fails to find the back of the net. Another save for Jack Martin. He's had a really strong start to this game. Now he's having to get involved. Kupinga is Tereo for net. There's a field block there. Sacred Heart still in possession. It's a scrappy game. It's not a high-scoring game. Defences have been outstanding from both teams. Now, we'll try to get into the game. They just turn position over, toed on up with the early momentum and narrowly. The defence coming from Gene Baggett. And they just got to bring Baggett in. And up. And picked off nicely, wasn't it? Really good there from Charlie Shipp. Uh, yeah, no, in fact, from Seth Byers. Really good legs to get up. Good vision to anticipate and to get that pass. Yeah, nice entry pass, gets manhandled though. But they still get possession, big shot now does come. This is the first goal scoring opportunity, hits the woodwork, and Tauranga come away with it. So, hanging tough. So, Austin Roper there for Tauranga, the number 13 cap. And we get play back underway through, Gene Baggett. What makes this guy so special, Baggett? Good legs, good shot, he's physical, he works hard, and he's got a good amount of hustle in the middle channel too. Yeah, has a big shot, and finds a way, finds the back of the net, and just like that, Tauranga go up by two. Use that niggle, that little splash afterwards, make sure the next guy Elliot know about it. All right, we've got to have some fear away, we've got to have some... It's interesting, because I've watched Tauranga warm up, they don't have the size that Hamilton have, they don't have the size that a lot of the other schools have. I was actually quietly surprised at how small a lot of them were. Yeah, but they, that allows them to let that active, they're mobile players, they play with pace, Carolina. You know, a lot of them come from just life-saving backgrounds, it's like, you know, deeply product backgrounds, and that allows them to be a quick mobile team, um, while still having the odd one who's got the strength. Yeah, it's funny, my, both my kids are heavily involved in CF Life-saving, both taken up water polo, and uh, a lot of the kids do it, you're right, it's a nice little crossover, they're tough too, those CF Life-saving kids. Driving out, looking for an opportunity, Sacred Heart, looking to lay it off, oh that would have been just at the box office. Second opportunity comes through, great follow up, you do have to feel for Seth Byers. So, penalty called, that's that new interpretation of the rule. So okay, I'll keep you to explain that. So, as he's gone to the goal, he then uh, grabbed him, gives him um, a far side the referee, has interpreted that he's been hit from behind, that's affected his shot, there's a probable goal scenario. And therefore, it's a penalty shot. So Toby Grace to take the penalty here for Sacred Heart. And well blocked, though, by Jack Smartin. We talk about the importance of a good goalkeeper, whether it be in ice hockey, whether it be in field hockey and in water polo, and that is a demonstration of it. That might right be there, the big game changer. Because there was the opportunity for Sacred Heart, and they couldn't take it. Tauranga now go down the other end and score a third. And how much do you put that on Jack Smartin? Maybe it's worth two goals if they can score now. So, ball out of the pool. Uh, looks like it's a double exclusion being called. Um, so, what uh, the referees interpreted is that those two had stopped playing the game and had just started uh, getting to know each other a little bit too well. <laughs> and, uh, Introducing each yeah, other. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Like, so like in ice hockey, not yeah. quite the same. Yeah, so they'll, be, uh, they'll both be off for, uh, for 20 seconds. Yeah. Oh, look, it, it, there is a bit of niggle, isn't it? They're young men. But I'll, I'll be honest, I'm amazed at the spirit in which the game is played for what does go on at times and respect shine out of the court is part of it. But there is a level that's acceptable. But look, let's be honest, it's no worse than being at the bottom of a ruck, is it, in rugby? No, absolutely. To be honest, it's just sometimes it's a little bit more visual. Exclusion on the right out so five on four. Four scenario now. Yeah, chance here for Todon to make it three. Driving forward. Oh, it has a big cannon of a shot. Brilliantly blocked, though, there by Josh Anderson and the number eight kick for Sacred Heart. Another key moment, big moment for Sacred Heart. They need to turn some of the position they've had into offense into goal. Got to try and close it up to one. The game is literally, we've been going five and a half minutes, just the two goals. 
Franklin Hart yet to score. Oh, lovely little entry pass, manhandled. Picks up the exclusion, six on five. Sacred Heart retain possession. I think from World Cup at the centre forward, held position. Sacred Heart patient, find him on that zone. There's the exclusion. Oh, good work here. But again, another good goalkeeper. This time, though, too much pressure. And what does that mean to Will Quinn? We talk about following up. We talk about backing up. Really good save initially here from Jack Smart. And did everything right. Got across to it. But just simply too much pressure. And Sacred Heart in this final. Oh, it's in. Dean Baggett halfway on the on the buzzer. In a 2-1. Unbelievable way to finish. So Clark getting themselves back in there with that goal. And then all of a sudden. This one then to see if they're gonna change that scoreboard over and if it's counted. Yeah, we'll just check on that, folks. So I keep saying this here, and we get caught out as commentators a lot. The game can happen so quickly that sometimes you can miss the action at one end. Now, at the moment, what are you seeing here, Hamish? I think Sacred Heart will be pleased with, with, that, with that quarter in a way. I know they're down. I know it's 3-1, but I actually think they were creating a lot of opportunities. You know, they've hit the bar heat. And I know you don't want to go down, but if they can continue to create that level of opportunity, then that's going to come from them later in the game. On the flip side, Tauranga also really pleased with that quarter. They've come out, they've taken the game to Sacred Heart already, they've put them on the back foot, they're creating opportunities across the board, and their defence is pretty working because Sacred Heart are making, are making some errors in their shooting and hitting the bar. So clearly some of that, you know, it comes down to the Tauranga defence. They have changed that score over now on the scoreboard, so it did count. 3-1. 3-1. Three, uh, three so it did count. Yeah, we basically, I'll get you to talk us through the action, because I've got to say, I was just looking down at my notes quickly, and I looked up, and bang, suddenly <laughs> it was 3-1. That's, that's what we talked about it. Knowing, it. knowing it's a coach killer, yeah, I think. it is. We talked about it in, in one of the previous matches where don't underestimate those final shots with two seconds to go, the, what we call a Hail Mary, or what the American football call a Hail Mary. Goalkeeper's only got to be slightly off their line. And so we do get underway in the second quarter. Toad on that, looking to create history, looking to try and win it for the first time. Not just at a schoolboy level, they've been incredibly successful at the men's club level as well, the whole region. And then starting up to take it to the more traditional Auckland clubs and schools. It's really good for the sport. So now looking to bring it forward. Seven, Jake Henry. Henry in the number seven cap. Has another big shot. A little bit of the field block in there. Took a little bit of the pace off. Really nice piece of goalkeeping from Blaise Van Herden. 6-5 conversions are really key for their mark. Seven exclusions during that first quarter. I assume that number will stay similar. So those extra play opportunities will be really big for them. A little bit of a, well, not a poor pass. A lot of pressure on them. So, number nine is Toby Grace. Oh, I saw the little door ajar and just couldn't quite get it. Position still goes the way it's taken hard, however. Now, uh, just pulls the trigger and it just goes wide. They're still retain the position though. Going to need to turn this position into points though. Can't spend this much time down the other end. Not capitalise against the quality team like Tauranga. So Josh Anderson here for Sacred Heart and the number eight cat. Goes across, finds Rowan Elliott. And another big block. Another great piece of goalkeeping there from Jax Martin. And climbed the foul forward, so he missed it, but now Sacred Heart get the chance back. You can see Tauranga here, stepping back into goal. Kind of Entry pass, couldn't do it. But exclusion, so six on five, goes away now, Sacred Heart. Nicely worked there by Sacred Heart, really good piece of play. Coming from Sebastian Dunn in the number 10, the forward for Sacred Heart. Blocked though, nice field block, they get the ball back, however. 
Now shot clock starts to run down, gets his left mitt on it. Once again, he's Jack Smartin. He's been outstanding in goal. He's been very good, hasn't he? He has been very, very good. Had a couple of really key saves. Asserted himself in this early, and I find with goalkeepers, the, earth, the more they get into the game early, the more their confidence yeah. grows, and the harder they are to get past in the key yeah. moments. And that's about getting that nervous system up. But you know, also just getting that read. It, it's a sport, though. You know, just getting that spatial awareness as well. Oh, it's getting nasty. Elbow to the head. It's the call. Rowan excluded. Rowan Elliott excluded. So the heart. That's his second foul of the day. Yeah, now shot here, Todong, oh, wow, 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 Gene Baggett, big left hand this time, go back, have a look at the replay, switch play nicely, come across, number 12 for Todonga, Isaac Shula, with the assist. Very nice finish from Gene, waited for Blaze, Sacred Heart goes drift to that near side and then hammers it home low cross side. Justin Pickering, Sacred Heart coach, decided that he needs a timeout to try and reassess things. I like that. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's, worth, it's worth taking a timeout in this scenario. But yeah, you've got to stop down, don't you? You've got yeah. to somehow shift momentum. Got to just change it up. Can't just keep doing the same thing here. Throw it on it. They'll know here. They've just got to keep doing what they're doing. Both teams, though, to be fair, have been very good defensively. Yeah, they have been, and they keep working hard. What, what I still go back. What impresses me about Total on defence, I, I don't think they're a particularly tall or big team. And so, you, you talk about their athleticism, their ability to just get across press, or I just they did a good job. That last exclusion was in the second half. I was about to say they were stepping into a deep, deep zone, and then they kind of got a little bit confused. But because they're playing with such mobility, they can kind of play in this weird so when one person's back and they're rushing out they're putting pressure on one on one and they're sort of forcing Sacred Heart to make the decisions they want them to make so Sacred Heart really do need to score now and they'll get a chance at the 6 on 5 so exclusion got to capitalise here shot comes across turned over though the intent was right, the execution just wasn't quite there from sake of that. The intended receiver was Will Quint, just couldn't get up. So, penalty called on that pass. A chance now here for Sacred Heart. How good, though, has Jax Martin been? Will he be a hero here? Oh, I missed it. Well, I think he's, I think he's you know. Look how high though Martin gets. And I'm gonna put that down to Martin. I'm gonna put that down to he just took any sort of spatial awareness away. Good save at the other end too though. Um, Blaze Van Heer, and he's also been very good. So still hanging tough, three minutes remaining in the second quarter. Tauranga. Toby Grace, coming in the pier this event, earns the exclusion. Now yeah, a chance Sacred Heart, they've had a lot of time down the scene, haven't been able to capitalise yet. Great defence though from Toad on the chance, now it does come. But it's more urgency being shown by Gene Baggett, what a player. Sometimes the leaders say, look, just follow me, I won't let you down. And then the cannon from nowhere. And just like that, Sacred Heart change it up offensively, try something different, they're rewarded for it. And we're back to two, 4-2 four, two is the score here. The lovely little layoff there from Jeff Evans, finds the big man, Toby Grace gets nice and high out of the water and just drills that into the left-hand side. Very really nice finish from Toby, gets himself, works off the ball to slide himself to the middle of the goal, gets good positioning, watch Jack Martin drift to that, that, that left post that he hammers it back home their side. You do feel, though, that it has very much been Sacred Heart who have had that momentum, but it's just been such good defence from Todong. 
I think uh, if Sacred Heart can score here again, then we might genuinely see that momentum shift. Yeah, I think so. I think Sacred Heart will actually be relatively happy with what they're doing. They just look to start putting the ball in the goal. Yeah. Because they're creating plenty of chances. It reminds me of my Liverpool football club the other day. Conclusion called on Jed Evans for Sacred Heart. Time out. Who's called the timeout? Tarana Boys. Tarana have called the timeout. The so interesting thing, Dave, here, Dave Cooper, the, the coach of um, Tarana Boys, very, very good referee in his own right, by the way. So, um, the referee from New Zealand at the World Championships in Doha earlier in the year, um, but now puts the coaching hat on, member of staff at Tarana Boys. He, I think he sees a good opportunity here, too, where, you know, minute 55 left in this first half, 4 2. You know, Sacred Heart have been sort of getting a little bit of over the last couple of minutes. Chance to get an extra player here, stem that flow, and, and, to, and take that lead back to three. So here is Kevin Shulip, former All Black. And he paid for a play of plenty of Hooks Bay back in the day, nearly 1990s. Or that person having the manager. Yeah. Sons have been remarkable in the sport. Shula in this team, of course, his older boys too, played for put on at the club level. National champions. Synonymous so, once with rugby, now synonymous the name with water polo. Put on that looking to just extend it. Another big cannon shot comes. Too much power, too big, too strong, too fast. And that is Henry goals who scores really nice work Gene takes the clean bag it takes the ball right down to the lane line uses the whip of the ball really nice cross pass for a great finish 5-2 Sacred Heart need to score need to stay in this a minute 36 remains in the second quarter New Zealand secondary school senior boys final two teams of gladiators Oh, a lovely entry pass. Just couldn't quite get it. Came position, though. But turn it over. And a lovely little smile there again from Gene Baggett. This says to his opponent. Got you that one. Another opponent. That was Cody Henry. Explosion called on Sacred Heart. Seth Byers off to the naughty corner. Great athleticism. Now we saw almost an action replay of the previous goal and we've seen it all over again. This time coming from Henry Scholes again, so almost an action replay of the goal prior. Just open at the back there. That's the danger. When you put those two defenders on the centre forward, create space elsewhere. And Tarant exploiting that. That 6 5 move to move through twice in a row, really impressive from Tarana. That's something that Justin will be talking about. So 6 2 the score, and then 36 seconds remain. Tauranga starting to take control of this final. What a wonderful moment it will be for them. This time they've won this. Produced some remarkable sportsmen over the years, some wonderful athletes across different sports. This program has just been slowly building. Big opportunity here, eight seconds to go. Oh, big cannon of a shot again, this time off the upright. Cody <laughs> Grace tries to take what Gene Dagger did in the first half, but Jack Martin up to the task. So that's it, half time. Yeah, well, I tell you what, every time Sacred Heart put pressure on Tauranga just answer and come down the other end through Baggett, through Henry Scholes and 
just got an answer for everything that Sacred Heart have, but Sacred Heart have had plenty of position, haven't they? They just haven't been able to find the back of the net at the moment. I think a lot of that also goes down to Jack Martin, who's been superb in goal for Toto. Yeah, I think credit to Caroline here, right? They've, you know, um, Sacred Heart come out really, really strong, and they've just weathered the storm, and they just take their opportunities, and they have just quietly, quietly built a four goal lead. Do you know what I mean? That's Sacred Heart continue to get these opportunities. They've got, you know, they've got Caroline since Dow trouble. Isaac Shaw is on three. He's done for the day. Austin Roper's on two. Uh, as is Cody Henry. So they're, they're earning plenty of exclusion. They're just not capitalising. And Caroline are just getting down there and taking their chances. Yeah, and, and the thing is, they've got, got to still believe. Yet they trail by four. Do they believe? Do they honestly think they can come back from this? And if the moment they start thinking they can't, well, it's game set match. We talk about small percentages. That is a key one. They're going to need to come out. They're going to need to be the first team to try and score. They need to be the first team that score in this next quarter. I'm just going to see if there's any change of tactics from the concept of heart with uh, Justin uh, preparing their coach not to make any adaptions or changes. But I think given they've been creating chances, I don't think there's going to be a lot to change. I just think they hope they can get the ball past Jack Martin. Yeah, and that's it. I mean, he's just been simply superb. And as we now see Jeff Evans for Sacred Heart up against Jake Henry for Tauranga. Tauranga there in the blue cap. Sacred Heart playing in the white cap, if you have just joined us. Kanakota Katoa. The coverage here on Fakata Māori. So, Tauranga. What position? press defence being shown here by Sacred Heart. Trying to put pressure on that ball to find a steal. And, and do it. And there you go, you called it. And so, turned over there by Jeff Evans for Sacred Heart. And that's the benefit of that high press. And now an opportunity down the other end. Does he go on his own? Does he look for a player? Looks for a little entry pass. Can't quite get it. Great defence. Getting up and reaching that was Cody Henry for Tauranga. And the number eight cap, really well read. You can see that's a distinct change in style from Sacred Heart already. That's a push. You know what I mean? They really pushed that counter attack. They tried to find that pass. I think in the first half they were probably backing off that pass and trying to use the time. You can see now they're starting to try and find something. Yeah, try and play a little bit quicker. Try yeah. and speed it up. Put a little bit more pressure on the ball carrier. Let's see how they respond. Like I say, the shot clock starting to run down. Yeah, I'm not sure that would have counted. It might have been just after. It would have been an interesting decision, but really good piece of keeping and the finish anyway from Blaise Van Heerden. And now Sacred Heart, again, with another possession. They must capitalise, though. They've got to find a way through this brick wall, which is Jack Smart, the goalkeeper. And a pass. They can go down the side. Retain possession. So Jake Gibson. For Cody Henry. In fact, my apologies, it's uh, Josh Anderson. And they do score. And they're back in it, Sacred Heart. Toby Grace again on the outside. Really patient with the ball. Yeah, really good here. Look at that. So, Josh Anderson. And then to Toby Grace. Lovely little combination. And probably just the first. Well, no. Jack Martin. A little bit unlucky, I was going to say. <laughs> was far in, I don't think she could have done too, too No, much. no, I've been a bit tough on him. <laughs> I had to watch the replay and I thought, no, Mark. Happens so quickly, doesn't it, sometimes? No, Jacks, you've been magnificent, my good man. And here we go. Counter-attack opportunity again for Sacred Heart. So 6-3. I'll tell you what, if they can score here now then it is well and truly game on because we will be genuinely seeing momentum shift. So we've seen some very good coaching here, changing it up. Now do they go quickly? Do they shoot from the perimeter? He's a big man, he's a strong man. He has a cannon of a shot again. Off the bar. Makes it position back though. Goes back through. Anderson. To Grace. Grace again. Oh, lovely pass under pressure. 
Oh, just wide. Just wide from Josh Anderson. Saw the door was open. Just couldn't thread the needle. Three minutes remain. Third period. Goalkeeper comes up his line, does a good job. Sacred Heart somehow survived. Now Tauranga. Goalkeeper was off his line. They look to go quickly here. This high press coming from Sacred Heart now. Putting Tauranga under a lot more pressure. Jim Baggett just being worked over. The playmaker for Tauranga. Pretty nice defense here from Sacred Heart, lettering and helping each other out. No, looking to drive, looking to drive. No lane, no. Yeah, and I tell you what, crowd not happy. Some of them are, some of them not. Exclusion, six on five. Sacred Heart, real opportunity. Oh, great. Oh, wow, wow, wow. That is good. That is superb. Well done, Sacred Heart. Brilliant from Rowan Elliott and Sebastian Dunn. Great combination. Shouldn't underestimate that pass there, though, from Seth Byers as well. Look how high, look at how high Sebastian Dunn gets. Big fella gets up really high, works. He's got three Tower the Boys players grabbing him, trying to pull him down. He stays up there, uses his legs and finds the finish. That is well and truly game on. 6-4, momentum shift, Sacred Heart changing tactics. Much higher press defense now, putting more pressure on Tauranga. And they are struggling with this defence. We started at the game myself and Hamish McDonald talked about the importance of big finals of good defence. Well, it's always an interesting dynamic too, right? Because you go into the young young athletes, you go into the half time of a national final. The school's never won it before. You go down, you have that break, you're up by four. How do you keep that mind focused? Do you start thinking, you know, we're home? And yep. then suddenly, Sacred Heart pounce. And these again, we we'll talk about experience, but they're still just schoolboys. Exactly. You know, physical, might be physically mature. At the elite level, I mentioned it earlier, there's an industry called sports psychiatrists and sports psy psychologists, and these kids are easily affected by it as well. So now, toad on up. Look at the defence, another turnover. Momentum shift, Sacred Heart. And they'll now look to push. They've got a three-on-one situation here. Desperate stuff. Do we see the little lob shot come in? Do we see the little cross shot? Oh, good. Well read. Now they look to come across underneath. Does the goal count? No. Inside the two metres. Somehow, Tauranga survived. A brilliant turnover. A brilliant counter-attack. Rowan Elliott excluded. Sacred Heart. Oh, that would have been close, wouldn't it? And now, Tauranga at the other end. Shot clock pressure, down to two. And they'll turn it over, don't even bother going for it, just get back on defence. One nineteen remaining. In this third quarter, an intriguing final. Settle back, folks, enjoy all of this one. That third foul, that was a third foul for Rowan Elliott too, so he's done for the day, he's had a big pass to play. Now, Sacred Heart, who have changed things up defensively, gone to a press defence and it's turned, another big shot now, and we are down to one. Tauranga, Sacred Heart, the defending champions, it is 6-5, one of the great finals beginning to play out. Go back, look at the replay. Toby Grace again, great work. Josh Anderson holds the ball up, Toby Grace up on his legs, off the hand, perfect top corner. Yeah, lovely little piece of manoeuvre there for, I think it was Jacob Quilty too, just starting to swim forward into that forward position, drew a couple of defenders too. And now, how did Tauranga react? Another turnover, pressure, starting to hit this Tauranga team, they were up by three, it's now just one. Hodonga now looking to try and press high. We've got a man open. Can they get the shot? And they can. And we're tied up at six with 24 seconds remaining. 
to come from 6-3 down to tie it up to 6. A tactical change earlier, a tactical change defensively, and it's Sacred Heart with the momentum. Tauranga in trouble. They look like a completely different team. This, I mean, we said it at halftime, the opportunities were there, and they've come out now and they're finding them. Tauranga, on the other hand, they've started to panic a little bit on their defense. They're starting to rush, and I think they just need to slow down. And find, and, and find what they were doing before. Oh, it's been a shift defensively, though, hasn't it, from yep. Sacred Heart. Look at this, this man-on-man, -man just getting here, putting pressure on, they go back and drop back into a little bit more of a zone-type defense now. And then immediately onto the ball carrier. Let the clock run down, two seconds remain. And there they do, and they are absolutely delighted. Well, it's been very much a quarter for Sacred Heart. We're tied up at six. 4-0 quarter second half. And we are going to the final six minutes. I said it at the start. 24 minutes in total. 18 minutes of hope. Six minutes of truth. We'll approach that threshold. What a final. Really, really cool stuff from Sacred Heart. Credit to them there. And a really big, really big stop there. I think it was Tom McLean who made that last block. You know, Tauranga trying to get a trying to get a start with 17 seconds left, trying to get that goal to get them one back ahead in a big field block. You can see how much it meant for Sacred Heart boys. Well, three quarters down. I guess he's going to do it all in six minutes. Well, I don't know. I I, I still believe Tauranga can win this, but it's going to require three deep breaths. It's going to require some clarity. And it's going to require some very very good instruction from that very experienced coaching group which is made up of David Cooper and Matthew Crawford and of course there in the background but we know he's going to have a huge say the great Kevin Shuler so if we're tired at the conclusion of this we will go to penalties um, so no extra time straight to a penalty shootout and just a special mention while well, we've got a quarter to go uh, no now but Gamma School take on Sacred Heart 2 in the Division 2 final uh, right now up in Hamilton so congratulations to those two schools for making the Division 2 final yeah my old school not traditionally a water polo school Mount Albert but nice to see them um, in the fight the best of the rest I guess it, it can change very quickly with just someone coming in good coach coming in saying I want to take over the program and so now turn on the start they wanted to start this last six minutes of this game looking to try and just speed it up you can just see a bit more urgency already here from Tauranga but again just this high press defense from Sacred Heart they're the ones with momentum they're the ones with the belief at the moment Tauranga need to find a way here look how busy look how urgent Sacred Heart are great work by Gene Baggett to milk that exclusion and get Jed Evans excluded big chance here for Tauranga yeah. you need to turn those chances into goals now this is the opportunity oh just couldn't quite control it more pressure though coming from Seth Byers for Sacred Heart on the fence off the upright crossbar and a moral victory goes the way of Sacred Heart 6-5 defense in these last couple of quarters has been really good from Sacred Heart they've been trying to keep Tauranga out crossing their blocking lines Blaze doing a good job directing traffic from the goal Oh, big power shot, an absolutely cannon. And for the first time, for the first time, it is Sacred Heart who leads 7-6. Wow. I could have sworn for all money Josh Anderson was going to shoot that, and I just love the patience he has. Just waits, 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 he locks Jack Smart on him. Quick pass over his shoulder and feeds the hot hand of Toby Grace. Has a Another one from the outside. You do feel there is still another chapter being written here. You have a feeling Tauranga are certainly not out of this. But they just have struggled with this change in defence. They've struggled with the man-on-man -man press. Another situation there. They've got to somehow find some clarity. They need to go to their big men. They need to bring Baggett in. He has another shot out of desperation. A wasted possession, perhaps some might say. Interesting there. Take a heart, stepping back a little bit into the zone. Again, maybe, maybe, maybe it's a time they've got the lead, but I think potentially just going to get their matchups right. It's Toby Grace again. Well, Sacred Heart here looking to do what some Cuthberts have just done on the girls, and that's go back to back. They came in as the underdogs. Tauranga came in as the favourites. 
4 minutes 13 remain. Return position away. So, exclusion called initially on Tom McLean and then on Jacob Kulti. So, six on four opportunity for Tauranga. And David Cooper has taken that to use his final timeout. Yeah, I think McLean threw the ball away, did he? Yeah, and, uh, yeah got picked up for that. And you could see that it was intentional. You know, and those little brain explosions that are very hard to control. And then it comes with more and more time and experience. But as we say, at a schoolboy level, anything can happen. What an intriguing final. It looked at one point like Tauranga were going to run away with this. They were going to crown a, a, a school that had never won it before. But suddenly, suddenly the Midas Sacred Heart. So much discussion around them at the end of last year, at the, the depth they had in their program after winning it. They were very much the favourites in Auckland. And they just came up short at the North Island Championships. And people started to ask some questions. But they found a way. Do they click? Is this their moment? So I'm interested to see here, it's a 6 on 4, traditionally a 6 on 4, it may sound a little stupid, 5 on 4 is actually easier to score than a 6 on 4. You just get your spacing a little bit better, and I'll be interested to see if one of the Tauranga boys hangs back here, which it looks like he is, so that Tauranga are going to take 5 on 4 rather than 6 on 4. Now I've got to take the 70% big chill opportunity, got to shoot, got to shoot, and they do shoot, and they bring it back to 7, they bring it back to 7. So maybe just a little lapse in discipline. Might have just crossed Sacred Heart there for a split second, but it's back to seven. Are we going to see another momentum shift? Great use of the ball here. And Lovely the big offense. man gets the done job done, doesn't he, Cody Henry? A great shot off the hand, catches it cross face, no hesitation, bangs it far corner. Really hard for Blazeman here to do anything about that. 7-7. Seven, seven. Oh, gets worked over. Pick up the exclusion, does he? No. No. Got him on the head, but... Well, that's exactly why I thought he got the exclusion. Central, yeah. Yeah. Oh, cannon. Cannon. That's sent. Reverberated around this Wellington Recreational Aquatic Centre. And now Tauranga trying to take the lead back. Still 3 minutes 14 remain. Oh, has a shot. No follow-up. Shot came from Logan Gilbanks. Got to be patient. Who cracks first? Three minutes to go. Josh Anderson. I saw the door open. Had a bit of a cheeky shot. And it almost pulled it off too because that was against... I guess the style that we've seen in recent plays and as I say, expect the unexpected. We've been talking about their patience, right? Then that one was probably a faster off the hand shot, but I guess it gives, it, you know, it, it keeps Jack Smart and Tauranga guessing in the goal. It does. No, I thought it was the right shot. I mean, it was the element of surprise then, wasn't it? It was actually the right time to shoot because everybody was looking to still set up, weren't they, defensively? Nice press here from Sacred Heart. Tower oh, a long way out. Boy, they've been good since they've changed the setup, going from that zone defense to more of a press. And this time can't quite get it in, and it will be Sacred Heart's ball. So two minutes, 17 seconds remain. Will the next goal determine this? It's been a close final. Emphasize this, that we had at one point a three-goal lead to Tauranga. They led 6-3. Then Sacred Heart scored four successive goals. Looking to try and score another one. They go through Josh Anderson. Anderson just throws the ball away. Good defense there from Tauranga. Limited their options. Forced a dunk from Sacred Heart. And that just gives them a bit more time to get back. Set up defensively. Here that the shot clock pressure. There's no options here. Now Tauranga. 141 remains. Two gladiators right there. Oh. 11 on 5. So 10 for Tauranga is Gene Baggett. Oh, and they score though. 
They score Tauranga and they're up on the reserves bench. 8-7. I think it was Logan Gilbanks gets the ball from Gene Bagger who steps away on his legs. Top corner. Yeah, beautifully balanced and poised, wasn't he? And that was the one time where maybe they just didn't press on him. Yeah. Gave him that zone defense, just gave him that little bit too much room. And they've got to just, they've got to press high. They've just got to put pressure on to Sacred Heart. That's when they've been effective. Nice entry pass. Exclusion, six on five. Great work from Sebastian Dunn. Youngster, year 11. Big now he goes himself, does he? Does have a shot, he shoots! He shoots, we're tied at eight. We're tied at eight, folks. Brilliant there from Josh Anderson. Great work at the centre, and then Josh Anderson, he's got no one in front of him, backs himself. That's what you want to see up big. One, two, fake. Sees Jack Smart hugging that right post and puts it through. Yeah, Jack Smartin couldn't do anything too. So tied up at eight, a minute seven remain as the next goal win it. Tauranga out of the timeout. Sacred Heart have got one left to advance the ball if they need it. So here goes Tauranga looking to push. They go wide through Logan Gilbanks. Gilbanks getting manhandled though by Toby Grace. And now it's Sebastian Dunn who takes it over, looks to turn Great it over work. yet again. This is where they've been so effective with that high press. And now advantage goes the way of Sacred Heart. 30 seconds remain. Both schools on the edge of their seats. Who wants this? Who cracks first? What a final. Jacob Quilty. Oh, he gets away from him. Jeff Evans. Evans with a little off shot. Oh, got up nicely, though, to Jax Martin. And now just nine seconds remain. We're going to go to extra time, are we? It will be extra time in this New Zealand Secondary Schools boys final. They said it would be close. We didn't think it would be this close. What a comeback from Sacred Heart. What a performance initially from Tauranga. I'm going to have to take a breath. Hamish McDonald, sum up that last 24 minutes. What an epic final. What an epic, epic final. Tauranga, everything going their way in the first half. Sacred Heart couldn't string a goal together, and then all of a sudden, four or five unanswered goals for Sacred Heart, and then credit to Tauranga. You know, to, to have that run put on you by Sacred Heart and have the composure to then retake the lead at 8-7, that's awesome. And it really, really credit to those boys and how well composed they stayed. Sacred Heart. They do it again, eight all, we go to penalties. Okay, let's talk about extra time, duration. So, no extra time, straight to a shootout. So, um, both captain, both coaches will select five players from each from their team. Um, they will be just like a, a regular penalty that we saw in the game. Right, they're five metres. Um, if we're tied at the end of five, we go back to the start. So other sports, I used to pull the keep going through the list. Water polo, you just go back to the start. There. It's interesting, isn't it? Because I look at both goalkeepers and they've both been brilliant. Blaze Van Heerden, but to me, Jack Smartin has been the better. Jack Smartin just looks, he's got just a little bit more physical presence about him. How, how important are the goalkeepers here? You know what I mean? They've got to make it, they've got to be really, they've got a huge part to play in this. But equally of the shooters, right? Because you can have the best goalie, but if the shooters aren't, you know, aren't putting the ball in the cage, then. Um, then it also makes it difficult. So you can see point toss here. So five penalties each. You feel for those athletes that do miss it because it is a lottery. The Tauranga, looks like Gene Bagger, captain of Tauranga, has won the toss and then the trip first. So put the pressure on early score first, put the pressure on Sacred Heart. Dangerous, if that save comes. I like that decision though. Get, get, get goals on the board. Yeah, I think that's the scoreboard pressure. way to do it. Um, and now the yips. Now the psychology of it all. Suddenly, does that goal look big for some players? Does it look small for others? And now it's about these goalkeepers creating some size. And it'll be first up for Tauranga. It'll be Cody Henry by the looks of it. Oh, 
Oh, brilliant save, Blaze Van Heerden. Wow. What a save from Van Heerden. Goes across to his right. That was a cannon too. So, early advantage, Sacred Heart. That was an awesome save by Blaze. Got up. Wasn't a bad shot from Cody, you know, left corner and bang. Great save. And now Toby Grace for Sacred Heart up against Jax Martin. Oh! And you don't see that very often. Talk us through that one. So he's just picked up with his ways, but he's gripped the ball there. He's just accidentally come up and he's lost it. So unlucky for Toby. He's had a great final, you know, scored four ripper goals. Um, so it's a hard way to hard way to for him to miss. Well, big Gene Baggett now, the leader of this total on the boys. Penalty shootout. Then he gets the job done. Tauranga go up by one. But Sacred Heart still have their penalty to take. And stepping up now for Sacred Heart, Josh Anderson. Anderson against Martin. Oh, Jax Martin. And look what that then means to Tauranga. So, advantage goes the way of Tauranga through two penalties each. Three to go. Tauranga lead by one. You can see there Jax Martin's playing mind games, right? He's leaping, he's coming out off his line and then he's been waiting for the whistle to come back. And Van Houten on the other end. So Van Houten saves one, we just missed that through the replay, we'll go back, have another look at it, but how good is Blaze Van Heerden? And you do then have to suddenly feel Henry Scholes. Who did the Blaze Van Houten? What a great save. Missed the penalty. Now back up at the other end. Uh, he scores, so we're tied up at one each. Two teams both have two penalties each remaining. Not often you see a penalty shoot out with one all after three. That's been great goalkeeping by both. So 13. Nice scores. Brilliant. Austin Roper for Tauranga. 2 1. But Sacred Heart to go. Fourth penalty. Number six for Sacred Heart, Seth Byers, an experienced player. And he saves another one. Does Jax Martin. So now, total on the score here, they are New Zealand champions. It all falls now on Jake Henry. It's gone wide. It's gone wide. Or did it go in? I think there's some danger here. I think there's a discussion. Might go back and have a look at our replay. I'm not sure anyone really knows here. Did that go wide or did that go through the nets? Let's have a wee look. That went in. So our television replays tells us that Tauranga have scored. Waiting to see referees taking their time. Sorry, making sure they get the decision right. They've called it, and Tauranga have won it. Tauranga are national champions. They've won it. A little bit of confusion at the end, 
but Tauranga have been crowned for the first time New Zealand Secondary School Boys Champions in a penalty shootout, in one of the great penalty shootouts, in one of the great games. So much theatre, so much drama, a delay. But they've got the job done. They've beaten the defending champions. But what a performance from Sacred Heart. They came back from 6-3 down to win it. That is unbelievable. Sum that up, Hamish McDonald. What an epic final. What an epic performance between two great teams. Credit to Tauranga. They started out with a hiss and a roar. Sacred Heart made a run back at them. But credit to Dave Cooper and his men because they've had an absolutely outstanding season. They've done it. North Island Secondary Schools, New Zealand Secondary Schools as their two big titles and, and congratulations to them. And Jax Martin, the goalkeeper, how good was he today? Simply superb. Made a couple of big saves, especially in that first half. Really, really made his presence felt. Um, you know, Gene Baggett with a couple of great goals. Cody Henry had a really good game. Um, on the other end, you know, Toby Grace really lit up for Sacred Heart on the outside. Blaise Van Heerden and made a couple of great saves in that penalty. You know, what an awesome final. And yeah, you do have to feel for Sacred Heart. They were good. Blaise Van Heerden in that penalty shootout. He was magnificent. Seth Byers, I mean, Josh Anderson, Toby Grace, the list is endless. Commiserations of them. They won it last year. But Jax Martin, Joseph Goodjohn, Matt Goodwin, Logan Gilbanks, Henry Scholes, Charlie Shivnan, Jake Henry, Cody Henry, Finn Crawford, Gene Baggett, Jake Gibson, Isaac Shuler, Austin Roper are your New Zealand Secondary Schools champions for Tauranga Boys College. Congratulations to their coaches David Cooper, Matthew Crawford and their manager Kevin Shuler. What a final, what a performance. North Island champions and now national champions. Yeah, congratulations Tauranga, what an epic season. Commiserations Sacred Heart. Um, and, you know, and it's, a, it's a great way to cap off what's been an unbelievable season of school we call it. Absolutely. Well, that brings our coverage to an end. I just want to say, no, the ira to a oti fa mata mahi i tenaira kina kai fakahiri mina kai fakataitai ki haumaru kakotu kakinge kio Koutu Kayenga. Tena koto na kaima ta kitaki ita koto tihono mai. Noho ora mai. On behalf of myself and Hamish McDonald, it's been a privilege and a pleasure. Congratulations to St Cuthbert's on winning the senior girls New Zealand Secondary School's water polo title. And history made for Tauranga winning their first. Bay of Plenty, the dominant school, dominant region in the country.